we're going to cover medical. Now, I know some of the uses for some of these things as far as what I would use them for, but it has nothing to do with medical professional. So my husband teaches medicine over here at the local hospital, and he's going to be joining us for our next episode on what we need in an emergency medical kit. And he also teaches a life support. So he got me, um, I got my first aid card and my daughters got their first aid card. So, um, so when you're in the medical field, you're gonna help other people. I know they say in bug out, you know, you're not gonna help others, but you do wanna help others. You do wanna rebuild your country. You do wanna rebuild your neighborhood in a time of trouble. So when we come back, we're going to talk to my husband. He's gonna be joining us here in just a little while. And we're going to discuss what kind of uh, items we'll need in an emergency medical kit, especially um, for you know what you'll need in your bug out bag, which would be separate, because things like this right here, things like um, Vaseline, okay, that's combustible. You can burn this. You can dip this in some cotton balls and add a wick, like a candle wick to this, and you can burn this. So it's good for a lot of things, chopped lips, um, multiple uses. So we're gonna let him, um, we're gonna let him discuss why he chose what he chose. And I will tell you that a lot of this stuff was only 88 cents at Walmart. We hit the bargain bin and we just bought him out what we could. Oh, he is joining us. Hello, dear. Hi. <laughs> this is my husband, John. We'll shake Hi. his hand for you. <laughs> I'm Dr. John. And um, go ahead and have a seat. And um, I'm interviewing my husband. This is exciting. Let's talk about the difference between a bug out bag and um, I'll sit up here next to you for a minute here. Let's talk the difference between a bug out bag and what emergency medical professional would probably want to carry like in a storm shelter or something. I mean, because in your situation, you'd help others. You, would, you wouldn't hesitate. I mean, you've taken an oath to do that in any situation. But you can only help people as you have the means to do such. Okay. The uh, difference, basic difference between a bug out bag and medical supplies in general are the bug out bag is specific to the individual. If you have high cholesterol and you're taking cholesterol medication or you're taking some sort of uh, blood pressure medication or, or in my heart case medication, heart medication yes uh, or you're insulin dependent diabetic where you need uh, uh, something to control your diabetes either um, whatever that happens to be the, uh, the bug out bag would be for you specifically for your medical needs. The, so it's designed for each individual person and their needs, and, male, and female, needs. or, okay. Um, as far as what you'd have in, in the storm shelter, generally, would be like a, a, a general things for this that would happen to a person. Generally, 90% of the problems we face in life mm -hmm. as far as health um, issues can be controlled if you have clean water, clean food, and clean air. In a disaster event, you may not be able to control the air quality. Okay. Uh, if you've uh, stocked up on the water or you have a means to purify your water, you can control the intake of water okay. and keep yourself from having different uh, issues, intestinal issues or diarrhea, vomiting, or dehydration that comes okay. from that. So clean water is very important. Clean water is very important. And hot water, if you have a means to make hot water, uh, if you're dehydrating your food, so then you fire. Can have, fire is uh, very important. Then fire or some means to at least warm the water enough that you could rehydrate. Can I ask what the food. temperature of water would be for clean water? Well, um, you'd have to boil water for a little while. You can get uh, you can get uh, tablets. We've, we've got those here. Whatever kind of tablets you use, you can use bleach. You okay. know, uh, in proportion uh, to your water. And chlorine is kind of dangerous in reference to a gas, but some sort of pills that you'd put in the water okay. and you'd purify it. The water for extended period of time still doesn't get through or get rid of the uh, contaminants as far as heavy metals, chemicals, chemicals, oils, or other different things that would be contaminating your water. Okay. So you have to think through um, a filter system for your water. Um, Okay. Uh, some sort of filter system where you use um, right. either a filter, you know, they sell them commercially, mm -hmm. or um, you can um, 
I, you know, make your own with sand and charcoal and, you know, different kinds of things that okay. you filter the water. Well, we'll cover through. that on our next episode. How's that? We'll, we'll, sure. we'll take this, we'll take some stuff into further detail. Right now, let's concentrate then on... Your bug out bag would be more specific for you. Uh, and if you're controlling your, your uh, as much you can, your air, mm -hmm. your water, and your food, that would limit any kind of illnesses that you may um, acquire okay. uh, from it. If you have basic, the, the basic things that we have laid out here are really basic. I mean, if you've got a heavy bleed or if you've got a heavy person that's um, in some way has a, a traumatic brain injury or something like that, mm -hmm. um, apart from, you know, monitoring the intracranial pressure and drilling a hole in somebody's head, which you don't have have the means to do. And drill. Uh, <laughs> I guess. I mean, if you have to, you have to. I mean. Well, yeah. If you're saving on, a family member or someone close to you, you're going to do what you have to do. So that's why taking some classes are very important, correct? Well, Just some first responder type courses are very important. First responders types of courses that uh, things that we did in the military, um, but you're not. We're not trained to you know, uh, drilled holes in people's heads and stuff. <laughs> but in reference to, if, uh, I mean, no, uh, there was no other way and the person was gonna die and you had to relieve the pressure and you're 10 years from a, a medical place to get some help and you have to evaluate each and everything you do based upon that. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when you were in Iraq and we, we were talking, um, from Iraq, and if, do you remember this conversation we were talking about when you were teaching medicine in Balad? I'm yeah. sure that's an experience you're not going to forget. No. <laughs> a lot happened there. Um, you you taught you taught me something there. It was the A B C D Fs of, um, of of an order to treat a person that's injured. Do you want to go over that just real quick, just briefly? Well, now the they're they're um, it's they're doing compressions instead of. Uh, the airway per mm -hmm. se yes but um, you want to make sure that like I said you have uh, an airway okay uh, people are exchanging air uh, you can give compressions uh, mm -hmm. to a person and then give breaths if you need to uh -huh. and uh, you can uh, what's the ratio now you taught me it's 30 to 2 is that 30 correct 30 to 2 yes. okay so you do 30 compressions, then you give 30, uh, two, two breaths. Two breaths. 30 compressions, yeah. two breaths. Two breaths. Yes. I know that they changed that a few years back here on, the, the, you know, the scenario was a little different then. They've changed things. They know now that getting the heart, um, the heart beating is more important. You know, you'll get the breaths. The you'll oxygen get, the lasts 10 minutes. negative pressure, um, 720 millimeters, 760 millimeters of mercury as far as the outside pressure. When you press on the chest, it creates a negative pressure and okay. will uh, allow for some exchange of oxygen even though you're not breathing for the person. So okay. if you're um, pumping, mm -hmm. then uh, they'll get some uh, motion or passive uh, air, mm -hmm. and then you give them two breaths if you can. And it's the same for infants? Uh, or, yes. Mm -hmm. Or if you got two helping you for infants, you do use 15 to 2. Okay, 15 to 2, that's correct if you have two, but if it's just you? Just okay. you, 30 to 2. Okay, so that's, that's, those are just basic, sim, you know, simple things that everybody, I think, needs to know. And I think everybody should go take a class like you offer yeah. out here at the hospital. And, um, and John, even also, by the way, if anybody's interested, yeah, I think how many people can be in a class per, per teacher? Five? Well, they have a ratio of, of, of six, uh, oh, six, six students to one instructor. Okay, so six students to one instructor. And John can get his hands on the, um, on the dummies. And if you remember the last time we did this, I named them. Uh, Bella and Edward was. <laughs> yeah. Bella was the baby. Edward was the <laughs> the man we worked on. Do you remember that day? Yeah. We, we talked. We got our daughter to get certified as well. Support and um, the. But um, we can do private classes as well, and we can get you certified. So if anybody's interested, we can hold a class for up to six people per yeah, class. Yeah, we want to have six people in a class. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the law. But um, we can get you certified. So if anybody's interested, we'll keep that in mind. Um, cause I, just think, I just think that part itself is important. I mean, it's a confidence that you have to help basic, others. Basic 30 compressions, uh, two breaths. 30 okay. compressions, two breaths. That's right. And you can yeah. get certified within uh, just a couple of hours, three or four hours, and you have the confidence to not only help your family, but to help others. So, mm -hmm. so very important. Okay. So, so bug out bag is more specific to your needs. If you're a cardiac patient, if you have some problems with insulin or some medicine that you mm -hmm. need, that would be in your bug out bag. If you, uh, to stock the storm shelter, the things that we have, and I'll go over them, 
they're just basic stuff that you would need mm -hmm. uh, you know basically mm -hmm. if you got a, a, a bad bleed you may have to take a blanket and tear it apart or mm -hmm. something um, you know you may have to make a makeshift tourniquet use what you have and uh, but some things that you'll definitely need here okay, well, let's, we'll let's, go over them. yeah let's go over these things here well we're gonna kind of relocate here because I need band-aids but they're steri strips so basically that's these little butterfly strips those right little butterfly five strips you can cut down a band-aid and make a steri strip but if you can find steri strips in a band-aid package uh, steri strips are real important and we got this at the dollar store and we got a really good deal on them really good the deal on them these basic bandages you can use for that. There was 100 of those, good deal. But if you have a wound and you have a big wound uh, and you have an artery or something that you can't stop the bleeding at all, mm -hmm. and, and long term, even though you use a tourniquet, you may have to, you may have to take a needle set. Uh, you may have to take some sort of needle set and um, actually sew the artery together uh, mm -hmm. where you can stop the bleeding. The, and stitches. Uh, I see you want to get one of these kits here. We picked this up for our, I think a dollar at the dollar store and it has the curved needles in it and that's very important for stitches, isn't it? It's helpful to have something that's a little bit curved that you can get to things. Uh, these are not sterile, uh, but... Uh, a you, lighter. <laughs> well, a lighter not the, won't sterilize alcohol? it either. Alcohol? Uh, alcohol won't sterilize it either. Huh. Um, it's uh, steam and pressure. So. Um, so how would you sterilize it in a bug out situation then? Well, we're talking about an emergency situation where you don't have what you need. Okay. So you, you clean it the best way that you can. You With try the... not to break up the clot, but if you got an artery or something that's really uh, gone awry, you've got to close it off. Okay. So um, you can actually purchase um, like a sterile kits if you need to from the hospital or some other place, but you're not proficient in surgery and um, as a medic in the military, we, you know, we did uh, suturing and things, and it's only under emergency situations, and um, you generally have a sterile needle or a sterile kit that you'd use. But if you have something that you can use, you'd use, you could use this okay. to bring the wound together. Like we said, we we use steri strips. But okay. if you can't get the bleeding stopped, you gotta you gotta close off that artery. Okay. Um, Let's come down here. Okay, we also have some extra things here that I thought was important because our battery's going low here again. Um, of course, safety pins. You, you know, you can find those. You can even put on the um, uh, the bandages with those. Some bandages, elastic bandages. So a couple of different sizes of those, very important. Strains and sprains um, are real important. And you need an ice pack. Um, and we're going to get some ice packs that um, that don't go in the freezer. The kind that actually you break and it gets cold. You break and it gets cold. Okay, yeah. Some minor irritants that people have um, are like pain. So okay, no, we're going to come back over here. We hit the 88 cent sale again at Walmart. So all of this was 88 cents each. Well, he talked about the diarrhea relief. Hang on, where's my diarrhea? Okay, here. We talked about the anti-diarrhea relief. This is very important because you know you can lose somebody just from the diarrhea alone. So you want to get several packages of these. If you make sure that people get clean water, clean food, and uh, you know their environment's clean, mm -hmm. then you probably won't have to worry about the diarrhea. But, but uh, the tablets are not made for long-term uses. So, so you, you have to figure that out. That gives you time to figure something else gives out. Gives you time to figure it out. This can limit the diarrhea where you won't have an issue uh, that someone would dehydrate on. You have her pain. So you'd have some sort of uh, pain. And you may have a pain uh, medicine that the doctor prescribed you for pain that you want in your bug out bag. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, acetaminophen, which is Tylenol. This is aspirin. You can use it for a toothache. Okay. Um, the small uh, 81 milligrams are like uh, for an emergency in reference to... And you can just place this directly on the tooth, correct? Yeah, you can unless there's a bleeding issue. But even if there's a bleeding issue, sometimes bleeding is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, if, okay. if it's oozing or bleeding, that's getting some of the things out and of it. And the infection and pus The and infection. Stuff. So if you have to spit or whatever, that's not a bad thing. Okay. But... Uh, that you can put on on a tooth, and th this you can also put on the tooth for pain. Probably yeah, the, this would be a more orange, effective. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, aspirin in the case of uh, like someone that has have some sort of heart attack or something, uh, okay. but they probably also have in their bug out bag some sort of nitroglycerin or something that the doctor prescribed. Mm -hmm. You can get 
get some nitroglycerin uh, to help somebody through it or uh, just some of this. Okay. And if you know you have a heart problem, then you need to carry your heart medicines. Okay. Itches. Um, Here's your allergy. We picked these up for 88 cents each as well. Walmart. Benadryl. Uh, the ingredient in ben Benadryl is this. Uh, it can be used in a variety of situations. Uh, you can use it for sleep. Okay. Uh, you can really? Also, hmm. Yeah. It, it can kind of help with sleep. Uh, also for hives or different other kind of allergic reactions. It has a variety of uses. If you're allergic to it or you have an allergy medication that's specifically prescribed for you, then you need to get a little bit of that, like 90 day supply, mm -hmm. and put it in your bug out bag where you can have it to go. Okay. So in the case of an emergency. Uh, but for general purposes, mm -hmm. uh, this is this is a good allergy medicine. What do you do, John, if your if your medicine, let's say you're diabetic and your medicine has to be refrigerated? What does somebody like that do? Because well, I was told in bug out situations they will be the first to pass, just because they can't get their medicines or they can't get them refrigerated. Well, that's really scary. You don't have insulin doesn't have to be. Um, refrigerated I mean that's okay well but, but there are medicines that do have to be refrigerated I was just using that as an example but there are well and they do refrigerate insulin it may mm -hmm. make it last longer mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't have to be refrigerated huh no I mean you can have insulin out and there's a, like a life expectancy for it mm -hmm. but if you um, if you want to keep it for a long longer period of time mm -hmm. then um, you would want to um, have a particular kind of insulin that was prescribed for you. But if push comes to shove, just regular insulin, if you're a diabetic, to control your blood sugar might be what you have to have. Okay. Um, what about a seizure medicine? If you need seizure medicines or some other different things. Uh, Stock up. You need to have like a 90-day supply. Mm -hmm. uh, and just tell your doctor we're, we're going to have... You can take your medicines. You don't have to like have a 90-day supply and just put it away and it's never used, but uh, have an extra 90 days on hand. So you get your medicine and you take it mm -hmm. and then you're going to renew it and then you'll have 180 days of medicine okay. on hand. Okay. And uh, you know, that's, that's a considerable amount of time, 180 days. Mm -hmm. So depending on the cycle when you get your medicine, just talk to your doctor, say, I'd like another um, a 90 days of my medicine. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you get your original 90 days and another 90 days and if you're in an emergency situation and you have it mm -hmm. in your bug out bag that medicine mm -hmm. you don't have to just leave it there just take it out and replace it with the mm -hmm. fresh stuff when you get but it in a bug out situation it would be nice to have a little bit of a chemistry degree <laughs> and and be able to help others yeah. uh, there are things in nature that you can use so mm -hmm. so uh, how it works why it works and how it does that mm -hmm. A lot of people, we don't really know a lot of why and how, mm -hmm. uh, but if it hurts you, then don't do it. Okay, I understand. That's a good old... Yeah. Adjust your kit to your personal preferences, to your needs. And again, um, I'm allergic to um, rubber, so we have latex-free gloves here. I mean, I can't even have bananas. So we have latex-free gloves here, and that's just a good thing just to keep on hand for any any well, reason. Well, I would only buy the latex-free because you never yeah. know who's going to have a problem with it. Yeah, that's right. You'd be better off. And again, just we got the gauze pads. We have several rolls of the bandage rolls. We have several sizes of the stretch-type bandages. Uh, what do we used to call these? And these right here come with the ace clips bandage. in them. Yeah, the ace bandage. Mm -hmm. And those come with the, the clips. And that's important. Make sure they come with the clips. This was all on sale at the dollar store or Walmart. Okay, so now let's talk about tweezers. Tweezers are important. Well, tweezers, if you have um, if you have something stuck or um, irritating you, you can uh, get it out, basically. Yeah. Um, Dress appropriately for the occasion. In other words, it's not a good time to run around with your underwear sticking out and a G-string and your jeans and your little tank top on when you're out walking through the woods. You need to be prepared and keep covered up because there's spider bites and there's other things. So we need to dress for the weather, need to dress just for health issues alone. Well, yeah, because there's going to be broken glass, there's going to be deb debris, so you mm -hmm. want to have a good shoe, something mm -hmm. that uh, you don't want to step on nails <laughs> if you can yeah. avoid it. So put these things in your bug out bag. That's very important. Somebody breaks a finger, you might have to use oh, yeah, here's some this. other uh, kinds finger of splints. things. Yeah, finger splints very important. You got different sizes here. People will 
digits seem to get hurt and, and, and things like that. Fingers, toes. There's not, uh, not too much you can do with a toe. You can wrap the toe with uh, next to the other toe yeah. and kind of uh, immobilize it a little bit. And we've all done that when we've hit it on the nightstand in the middle of the night, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> a little painful when you, when you break a bone in the foot. Yeah. Um, oh, it's very painful. Somehow. Okay, so that's so. There's some of the things here that we that we didn't get at the sale that you think that we need. We need the Q-tips. We we talked about well, that. Well, we definitely need some sterile Q-tips and some Q-tips, and we definitely need some ice packs. So not you're not going to have availability maybe of refrigeration. So you need something that will ice up for you, mm -hmm. um, like a break and go, like a break and go. Pack. Yeah, break yeah. and go. We definitely need a way to heat water. Uh, even though we have the, the sterilizing tablets for the uh, Coleman tablets, mm -hmm. um, those are only for temporary. You're going to have to set up some sort of uh, filtering system for your water. Mm -hmm. Having a good knife or, or a good tool uh, would be important. So like a Leatherman or uh, a bigger tool in reference to hacking down uh, or uh, making firewood or something like that or for a defensive Shelter. tool, tool mm -hmm. uh, that can be uh, helpful. Mm -hmm. You would use scraps and stuff mm -hmm. basically uh, however you could get them and whatever uh, means um, they're available to you mm -hmm. and you just um, make mm -hmm. the best of what you have. But uh, as a summary, clean water, clean food, clean air. So if you may not be able to control the air per se but if it's really dusty and smoky or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, if you got a mask, uh, put on a mask. You know, ensure that your water is potable and clean. Mm -hmm. If you put those tablets in in a bunch of oil water, mm -hmm. you're ne you're not going to remove the oil or the debris from the water. So or chemicals, if, yeah. Yeah, if you put the water through some sort of sieve, or uh, you know, uh, some sort of little filter, it'd be better. Cheesecloth, even. I mean, a handkerchief, anything Something would be to better. Get out the dirt and debris, mm -hmm. and the big stuff. Then you could use those, but those are only temporary. Mm -hmm. And but in the long term, you got to have some way to f uh, filter your water and have some clean water. Uh, Janie's working on uh, dehydrating food, so uh, it'd be important to have a, a clean water source and a way to heat your water. Mm -hmm. uh, there's several um, fires per se may not be the best answer. So uh, limited electricity use. Uh, there's ways that you can get uh, wind and solar power to operate uh, I did water. Actually, I designed a uh, system for that last year, or two years ago, wasn't it? That I designed the polar, the solar power uh, system for the house, and we still have to build it yet. It's one of my paper plate designs. <laughs> yeah, so there's um, there's a way you can get some solar power or heat up some, mm -hmm. uh, some water so you can have uh, some hot water. Okay. So we have a generator, so I mean, uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you have fuel, then um, mm -hmm. you could use it temporarily, mm -hmm. but the availability of fuel may be an issue for you too. Mm -hmm. So setting up all the biofuel, um, you know, wood burning stove and all that stuff that you would need to um, to mm -hmm. have your own oil and stuff like that is is a project in and of itself. Mm -hmm. But if there's a storm that wipes it out, so you may have this nice thing that you built, you know, this refinery to produce all this stuff. But mm -hmm. if a storm comes, I mean, you may not have that stuff any longer. Mm -hmm. So you, you're But you do the have the knowledge to rebuild it with the basic tools that you can find lying around in a debris field. Yes. Barrels, coffee pots, uh, copper piping that used to be on people's houses. You could build a small refinery, figured out. Temporarily, just keep yourself clean. Uh, your baby wipes can uh, do that. So uh, everybody's bug out back ought to have baby wipes. <laughs> Yeah. And some deodorant and just the basic... Uh, well, in the military, I mean, need. you know, you, you, you clean up with the baby wipes and, and, and something along that line. You know, some sort of a, a wipe. Yeah. Until I mean, you, you just don't always have water, so... Um, well, that's a good way to keep yourself clean. Put on a little deodorant, freshen yourself up for the day. And I can uh, teach you in one of my videos how to make your own deodorant with uh, things you're going to have in, uh, in, your, uh, in your shelter. Think about There's your bug no out bag, what you want in it, and then... Uh, this can be expanded, but this is just um, scrapes, cuts, basic, simple things that uh, that everybody wouldn't have to carry, but you'd have as a group. Mm -hmm. Now, in your bug out bag, let's talk about your bug out bag. I think it'll be really interesting. Mine will be more of the protector's bag. I'll have all the weapons clinging to me, and I'll probably have to hang them off your bag because you're stronger <laughs> than me. You can march further than me. But um, 
my question to you would be, now, would you have your surgical tools, you think, with you? Any kind of surgical tools that you would carry with you? I mean, I'm just interested in knowing that. Well, I mean, it depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, you have a doctor bag, and it has all the surgical tools in it. I know because I sterilized them for you. There's a limited amount of things that you can actually do. So That you can carry, even. That you can carry. So you just have the basic stuff. Mm -hmm. and. Um, but do you, don't you feel as a medical, now we're getting into the deep conversation here, don't you feel that, though, as a medical professional, I mean, you took an oath to... Um, to help others no matter what can, to the end so don't you feel with the military I could do different things because I was licensed to do that with the military mm -hmm. in the civilian sector uh, I can teach uh, medicine and I can uh, you know teach uh, other different things in reference to basic first aid and mm -hmm. other different things mm -hmm. and if it's my family member or someone that I know or I'm trying to help um, you just have to take case by case uh, mm -hmm. situation but you can't um, you can't help somebody if um, if you don't have the means to do it. Mm -hmm. So some people might die. Mm -hmm. Some people may perish. Mm -hmm. uh, some people may not be prepared for for whatever they needed to do. Um, it will get to a point, I think, where each person will be to each his own, and you know, it will come down to protecting. Uh, even your medical supplies and your um, well, food supplies. you can't supplies. help somebody with something that you don't have. So mm -hmm. if, if uh, but if you do have it and they don't have it, they're going to take it. So I mean, that's marauders. That's that's the first thought. In um, well, you want to be as gracious as you can be to people and uh, help people as you can. Even even New Yorkers were getting caught and getting arrested going down to Oklahoma, stealing and marauding down there. Well, taking advantage, taking advantage are, of people uh, who are down and out. I mean, they're they're driving through neighborhoods and trying to uh, pillage you know, uh, their copper t pipes or whatever, I Yeah, mean, that's pretty low. In emergency situations, people you know, take TVs, smash them, do all stuff, they do crazy things. I mean, the, people are going to have to think seriously about uh, defensive measures in reference to if someone tries to invade your area, you'll have to have a way to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you, you want to be as gracious as you can to people, we're mm -hmm. still human beings and we want to maintain that humanness. Uh, and, and not become, you know... Uh, crazed beast. <laughs> crazed beast, yes. Okay, we're back with Dr. John Pendleton, and we're discussing medical supplies for our storm shelter and for the bug out bag. And he's gonna talk to us here real quick about the items. Now, um, camera died here when we went to a Band-Aid, so let's start over here. So, no, we're talking about the Steri strips. Now, you wanna well, start there again, please? You want to get a, you want to get a steri strip. A steri strip uh, you can use instead of a suture, and you can pull a wound together. And that's the little butterfly strips right in here. Okay. So next on the list, John, would be. Well, whenever you have a wound, no matter what kind of dressing you have, you want to make sure that the wound is as clean as possible. So okay. if you have some uh, uh, saline wound wash, you can squirt that into the uh, the area and kind of clean clean it. That'd be an open wound type situation, or a cut, or both? Well, a cut or anything, you want to wash it or squirt it out with something clean. Okay. This is sterile okay. and clean before you put a dressing on it. You can also use hydrogen peroxide, with, we'll kind of debrief it, and you can kind of squirt out there. Um, I also would like to mention that um, hydrogen peroxide can also be used as a cleaner in your home as well as a disinfectant in your home. Yeah. You can mix that with a little bit of water and uh, some other things. So you can go online and find out more uses for hydrogen peroxide. Very important stuff in the, in the, in the thing. And this is uh, hydrogen peroxide as well in the spray bottle. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's uh, hydrogen peroxide. And if you got it in a spray bottle, it kind of, you can direct it. And, uh, and squirt it there. Before you get a wound or uh, to, to also cleanse a wound you can use betadine. The thing about betadine is it has to be dry before it's effective. So you put it on, it's damp, it's wet, you don't want to pat it off or get rid of it, you let it dry. Iodine cleaning, cleansing solution. It's not effective to kill microbials until it's actually dry. So you put it on and you have to let it dry for it to be effective. So, uh, okay. and we, we talked about this, the peroxide is a cleansing agent. This is also a cleansing agent before you put on your dressing of any type. Okay. The cream that you'd, you'd select is based upon uh, the injury. 
Generally, a triple antibiotic cream uh, in whatever variety it happens to be will kill uh, various and sundry uh, infective triple organisms. Triple antibiotic is important. It's got uh, different uh, microbial uh, uh, killers. So uh, you can put that on and then um, after you clean the wound and then you put some sort of dressing on. If it's a little one, uh, you can use band-aids. If it's open, you can bring it back together with steri strips Okay. And then you'd want to cover it with something. So depending on uh, how big it is, you could take uh, a gauze of whatever size you need and you'd cover it with the gauze and then you could wrap it uh, with something if necessary. Okay. If the basic band-aid is good, then that's, that's what you would use. Okay. If you have a puncture wound, um, there you go. a bullet wound, an in-and-out wound, you can use this... Uh, to uh, insert into the, the site. It's very absorbent. Uh, it will stop the bleeding and uh, you'll definitely want to cleanse it as much as you can. Use it, another agent to kind of clean it and you can use this. Uh, tampons. Tampons. Men don't like to say that word do they? You avoided it twice. <laughs> Go on. Uh, no, it's fine. For the entrance wound. The entrance wound is generally uh, smaller. Okay. Uh, if you got an exit wound, it's going to be larger, so you might need another pad. Uh, and these are sterile, so... To cover the back. Plus, plus menstrual cycles. I mean, you know, you got to think of the girls in the family. So, so I mean, it serves a double purpose. The world's not really sterile. Yeah. Nothing's really sterile, per se. Mm -hmm. But it's clean. Mm -hmm. So it could get you uh, in a place where you could... Um, get other medical help. Get other medical help. Uh, if, if someone has a bug bite or some sort of rash, okay. uh, the hydrocortisone cream. So bug bites and rashes and itchiness, burns, stuff like that. Yeah, and, hydrocortisone. And this is uh, similar, but... Uh, okay, this is your anti-itch creams. And what's what's this? This is a topical antigel... Uh, I can never say that word. Analgesic. Analgesic, see? You can tell he's a medical yeah, professional. Yeah, hydrochloride. <laughs> it's the same as Benadryl. So okay. whether th this actually is a uh, steroid and this... Um, okay, show us, show us that together again. Okay, so this, this one here, the, the, um, the hydrocortisone cream is actually more of a steroid a type steroid, cream. A steroid, yeah. And this has zinc in it and diheffamine hydrochloride, which is Benadryl. Okay. Uh, it's a different... Um, so what's the two different uses then? It's a, the anti-itch cream is a histamine blocker. Okay. Uh, it's diheffamine hydrochloride, or also uh, known as the trade name Benadryl. Okay. Now, this um, is a steroid. Hi yeah. And it's, it's a, uh, it works differently. What would you use that for? Well, you can use it for, um, for poison ivy, for itching. And for um, burns, or, or what do you? Well, you wouldn't want to use it for burns. You'd use silvadine cream for burns. We don't have any of that. Okay, we better so get some of that then, because <laughs> you know how silver. us redheads burn. Okay. It, you don't generally uh, use this on an open wound, so like a cut. Okay. These are not used for cuts or places that are open. That would be your triple antibiotic. Triple antibiotic open. Um, you could put uh, the anti-itch cream if it's hydrocortisone and zinc on an okay. open wound. This okay. one you generally don't use for open wounds. Okay. Um, That's just like rashes and bug bites and things rash like that. Rashes, an external sort of thing. Okay. And it's a, it's, okay. it's a, it's a, it's different. Okay. These. What, what is the uh, Pro-X then? What is that? That's a, you said that's a, a antifungal cream. Antifungal cream. So if you, um, jock itch, uh, foot itch, uh, some sort Jungle of. Jungle rot then. Yeah, some sort of um, fungus. Okay. Um, now, would you carry this in your bug out bag, or these items just be in the medical kit? Well, if somebody has an ongoing problem with a fungus, then they would have whatever fungal medicine that they would need. Okay. So, uh, so again, personalizing your, your own bug out bag to your needs. Your bug out bag, uh, based upon your particular needs at the time, uh, mm -hmm. would be important. So, okay. if you have. If you have some issue with jock itch, then you should probably have some... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm laughing at that. You didn't like to say the word tampons? <laughs> I'm laughing at the jock itch. Okay, you, go on. You probably want to put something in your bag to take care of that in an emergency situation. Okay. Uh, now, if you're not suffering from that and you're not having any issue with that, then you probably wouldn't need it. 
we would have it available just in the general um, medicines that you'd need. Okay. Some aspirin cream uh, for arthritic pain and uh, different other kinds of joint pains and stuff like that. This is really... That really works, especially, believe it or not, you rub this once on my back of my neck because I get one of those, I get those migraines. Again, mm -hmm. this would be in my bug out bag because mm -hmm. of my personal problems, but mm -hmm. um, mine's migraines, as you know, hormonal migraines. So the Asper cream, he put this on the back of my neck and it really helped my migraine. So I would keep this with me along with some Tylenol or some Vicodin or something just for the migraines. Well, if I this couldn't helps believe you, it. If it helps you, and it helps my hands. I, I have a little arthritis in the hands and mm -hmm. um, I use it on my hands and, and my joints and stuff and it really mm -hmm. does help the joints. Aspirin, uh, if it didn't cause like ulcers, uh, is, is a good medicine too uh -huh. for arthritic pain. Okay. Um, but maybe some uh, aspirin with um, a coating on it mm -hmm. they're called enteric coated mm -hmm. aspirin that you could take well we're not going to have drug companies might not be available in a bug out situation we might not i mean you're not going to have your doctor down the road from you making appointments this is another reason why you're going to have to come up with some natural and some uh pre-store-bought things that you're going to need and your family might need you really need to think ahead don't you yeah these work good the other thing that can happen is you can have a loose tooth or a broken tooth or oh, some yes. sort of trauma look at this you covered um, that yesterday. You, um, you picked this up. This is a fast tooth repair kit. There you go. So uh, Okay. There it is. Now it's focusing. Uh, repair lost feelings and loose caps. And it's got the little tool in here to do it. Well, that's very important to have some of this on hand, isn't it? If you got dental uh, things like I do, or uh, if you had a dental problem, you could solve that uh with that for a temporary situation, you'd need somebody. Until you could get to a dentist or Until something Until you get to else. a dentist. You can also uh, put an aspirin or something uh, in your tooth. The thing about aspirin, it, uh, bleeding is an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're bleeding, uh, you may mm -hmm. not want to use that. There's also an oral uh, pain reliever. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, th this has got... Um, benzocaine in it, lidocaine or any kind of cane, <laughs> cane. Uh, okay. medicine. Um, is a pain reliever. Is, is a pain reliever. If you got a problem with mouth sores or um, you know pain in the mouth, this is a different sort of thing. Um, but uh, this, this can be really helpful. The nice thing about these is it has little droppers you don't have to touch the site, but you can drop it in the right place. That so you you're want. keeping yourself from getting infection that way. Yeah, to or pain. helping an infection. You're not increasing it by by not touching it with your dirty hands. Because in a bug out situation, it's going to be really hard to be really clean. Really clean, but you could open the mouth, um, use a gauze, and uh, use the dropper. Mm -hmm. and not uh, contaminate it so that you could use it for several people. And again, if you have children or a baby or grandchildren with you, then you'd probably want to do something more along the line of like or gel or something. Or gel, some sort of, um, you know, teething medication or or gel even for mm -hmm. like uh, a tooth that you've broken mm -hmm. or something. So again, we're, we're adjusting the bug out bags for each family member for their needs and their age group. Yes, and these okay. this and would take gender. care of oral pain and this takes care of like canker sores and stuff like that. Okay. Um, how about alcohol swabs in, the, in this general area? Let's talk about some of this stuff. Alcohol in and of itself um, is actually not a yeah. um, is not actually an antiseptic, is it? Well, it is an antiseptic, but it, it um, at a certain rate, but it it's painful. So oh, okay, that's what we were, that's what we were discussing. I thought you were saying I mean, something you about could, alcohol. You can not. take alcohol and pour it over a wound. Or you can squirt uh, some hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> I think I'd rather debris a wound. I'd rather have the hydrogen peroxide. I actually amputated my finger right out of high school and um, and we used the hydrogen peroxide in water and soaked it a couple times a day. Have you ever got um, have you ever got alcohol in a wound? It really hurts. It really hurts. It burns and uh, it's not really effective in reference to what you want it to do. Okay. The hydrogen peroxide actually will kind of bubble things up and clean things out. Okay. If you take some saline mm -hmm. uh, and you squirt it on there mm -hmm. and uh, this is kind of a forceful squirt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it'll help remove the debris out of there. Yeah, get the, the basic stuff out of there. 
Then you put a triple antibiotic ointment and you're on your way to healing. Okay. Um, when do we know, let me ask you this, when do we know the difference between when we're going to need an antibiotic? Because antibiotics aren't going to be really readily available. So the best thing is to clean that wound as quick as possible. And let's say we do get the infection anyway, it's spider bite. My son just got a spider bite, his leg swelled up. Well, your body, your body in and of itself... Uh, will fight it? Will fight it. Mm-hmm. Part of the swelling and inflammation process is actually your body taking note that you have a bite. Uh, you and can, it's attacking it. And it's attacking it and it's trying to resolve this issue. issue. If it's not open, um, this is what you'd want to use if you have a puncture hose. <laughs> okay, we um, want to use this uh, anti-itch cream. Anti-itch right cream. If okay. it's a rash, like poison ivy or something like that, we use a hydrocortisone. Uh, okay. This. Okay. Um, the alcohol um, swabs, you know, just to basically clean the outside of the skin or mm -hmm. around the skin, you could do that. Can we clean our tools, our surgical tools, with these? Alcohol in and of itself doesn't sterilize the surgical tools. You'll have to have steam and pressure. 